pipes. TGIF, ladies and gentlemen. TGIF. Ain't that right, Peter? Thank God it's Friday. Mm -mm -mm. Love me Fridays. And I already know what you're thinking. Mikey Pipes, it's Friday. What are you doing working? And my response is, that's right, ladies and gentlemen. And that's right. It's Friday, September 30th, 2022. Why am I working today? Because we're busy. We're so busy that I have to work on a Friday. But Peter, at least I got Peter. He's a good help. And he's learning a lot. Ain't that right, Peter? And yesterday, you want to talk about how you what you did yesterday? No, I'm good. Nah, we're not going to talk about what Peter did with the other mic yesterday, but you can only imagine. But he's back at work again, and that's that shows the character of the individual. And I'm thankful that Peter is back here again today with me instead of the other mic. And I'm sure he's thankful, too. You're very thankful. <laughs> All right, we're going to kick off this last day of September on the work calendar by... Doing the heating tune-up. We're heading over to a client in Malvern, which is in Nassau County, about seven, 10 minutes from the shop. We're doing the heating tune-up. Uh, I think it's got a Dunkirk boiler. So it's gonna be the first heating tune-up I'm doing for the season. It's gonna be really, really nice. I think it's the first heating tune-up. No, we did a heating repair already. I haven't done a heating tune-up. So it's gonna be nice. Make sure you stick around. Make sure you smash that thumbs up button. Smash that thumbs up button like you wanna smash potatoes to make mashed potatoes on Thanksgiving and how I want to take take this bottle of freaking hand sanitizer and smash your face in for not hitting that thumbs up button. So do it now. We've I tried. That's what last weekend when I put it on, it was kind of cold. I'm like, let me just, you know, make sure it works. Well, you'll hear it fire, but then there's no, 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 no air. No bueno. So here it is. So I put it on now. Like you're using that, you can hear it click, but it, it'll, it'll click. But then, yeah, there's nothing. And it turns on downstairs? Like, you can hear it, you can almost hear it here. Can you be quiet for a second? Let's see if we can do it again. Um, I heard the click, I heard that down the relay downstairs yeah. open. Okay. And then there's no, then there's not that, like, whoosh, where of course now it's going to start making some, some fun <laughs> hot air for the rest of the time. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what's going on. I think I remember. Oh, was I here on a Saturday night like five years ago? I think I came before or after dinner. Yeah, I remember this. It was Saturday night about five years ago. And you had no pilot. Nope. You had no pilot, and we ended up changing the gas valve. It's running. No heat in the house. Okay. So we have ignition. We have. Yellow flame. Yeah, that's actually maybe a little bit too much there. Yeah, well, that's, <laughs> that's expected here. Take a look at that low water cutoff probe <laughs> and the wire attached to it. I'm mean, gonna guess there was a control here at one point. Okay, and I hear the relay. Here's the relay, the Aquastat relay. Aquastat relay is making that noise. And if we go over to the circulator. Oh, it's running. Circulator is running, you can hear that. Peter, put your ear against it. No, this. No, I can hear it. You can hear it? Okay. So, but he's got no heat. Let's check pressure. Pressure is right around 15 PSI, it looks like. That's getting hot. And that's warmish. Vent damper is bypass too. <laughs> Man. That actually sounds like an automatic feed on a steam boiler, but it's probably an ice maker. <laughs> and believe it or not this was actually a steam boiler you see uh yeah look at that 
you or someone in this house's history converted this boiler from yep. uh, from hot, from steam to hot water. Yep. Ah, look at that. See, there's the water level mark. See, see that, Peter? Yeah. There's the water level mark. This was the upper valve and the lower valve of the side glass. They made this the Aquastat relay tapping. They this was the low water cutoff probe, which is right there, which they didn't bother to wire in because now you, the probe needs the control for it. And is the rollout? Yeah, so that's wired in, right? Yes, this went to there, I assume. So you converted the house from steam to hot water. Yeah. And there's the you piping. Regret you regret it? We love, you know what? Radiators. Not like that. Was nice warm steam radiators. They were a pain in the ass. They were pain in the ass. And let me guess, they started banging. They were banged every time they came oh, yeah, on. Big leak, big leak. And it was someone convinced you to convert it. You know, we were in the middle of renovating anyway. We just put central AC in. Yes. Um, yeah, it was like the kids were little. It was like okay, you can fix it for whatever eighteen thousand yep. dollars, or we can just do this. For five, you're like, you know what, I man, I don't have that kind of money. So. I hear you. No, but they repurposed the boiler, which is okay. Yes. I would have liked that they put back a few uh, key, you know, safety devices, like the low water cutoff, the vent damper was by, you know, but yeah. it, well, again, it is what it is. So. Over the years, we've been, yeah. Now, as far as, as far as piping, I see you have one zone in the house. Yeah. And all the piping is in PECs. They, they disabandoned all the steam piping? Yeah. Okay. So it's all PECs throughout the house. They gave you ba baseboard probably, or they gave, what did they give you? No, forced air. Oh, forced air, at events. Yep. Ah, okay, so now we're getting somewhere. So now you have, you turn the thermostat on, but nothing was coming out of the air handler. Right. Now we're getting somewhere. Okay, so now I was, I was focusing all my attention on the boiler, well, maybe it's the... but we need to deal with the blower. Okay. Which is up because we do have, that's hot, that's hot. Want to grab the thermal camera? We'll take a look at this real fast. All right, we got our HIK Micro, the B20. Open the sight window and take a look at the piping. So we are circulating. The one to the left, that's supply. And we're already at 132. And that one, 121. So we are circulating. The only issue now is why isn't the air handler coming on? Because the forced air system. All right, Peter. Now we're going to head upstairs to the attic. And oh, where... It's, it's a knee wall. Yeah. It's a knee wall. And over the summer, you and Daniel actually replaced the blower motor. Um, and it took a... Uh, it was quite a challenge. Because they built the wall after they put the air handler in. So, let's go fix this guy's heat. Cool, but... Uh, All right. Let's see the seat pad. I wish I had a better light for you, but I'm just, you know what I mean, this. Light? Okay. So it looks like we got a comfort maker. Let me guess, that's the blower compartment? Oh, uh, to the right, yeah. How did he get in there? Um, this way. The closet. Yes, <laughs> we can't get back in there because we have to. Oh, my God. Wow. All right, so here is our, ooh, there's our fan coil, which is hot, hot. Are you going to turn it off downstairs? No. No. There's no switch here. Ow, damn it, it's hot. Is there a power switch? Remember, we call a power switch being here? Uh, not particularly. See the power line. Let's go to the thermostat. All right, turn the thermostat fan switch on. The fan comes on. All right, so we know we have 24 volts and we know we have a proper voltage for the fan to come on, but why isn't the boiler triggering? Oh, why isn't the hot water triggering the fan coil to come on? That's the question. All right, here we are. We're in the closet now. Peter, I'm in the closet. Oh, <laughs> oh look he actually has a sense of humor he said oh boy <laughs> want to be in the closet with me you'd rather be out of the closet right <laughs> um all right i'm gonna try to take this panel off and see what the deal is but there's our space conditions that are working how did daniel get this blower out of here it came out this way uh 
we had I was I was here or he was here, but there was one of us on one of us on each side, and we were kind of just push it out. Yeah, back and forth. Damn. All right, let's see what happens. Peter, I don't really know how this is coming apart, but we got the cover off. Pretty cool, huh? Take that, please. Thank you, Peter. All right, let's see what we got here. So there's our, there's our blower, which we know works. And here's our control board. We got a bunch of Wagos here. <sighs> All right, so for whatever reason, the fan is not turning on the blower. I mean, the Aquastat, strap-on Aquastat is not turning on the blower. We know that this wire right here, was it that one? Peter, I want you to go on the other side. You know that wire that's connected to the Aquastat? Mm -hmm. Why don't you try to pull on that a little bit? It's this one, right? Perfect. Okay, good. All right, so this one. Oh. We have a... Sh I was about to say we have a short. Right? But the, the people on YouTube corrected me. We haven't... We had an open circuit. Right, I just wiggled this wire. Right, this wire right here. I mean, uh, I wiggled this wire, and then the blower came on. Now she's blowing, and she's not blowing bubbles. <laughs> All right, so I took Wago lever, Wago's lever two twenty one conduct um, wire connectors. This is the five conductor, two conductor. So I have. Five two conductors, one five. Just eliminates all the wire nuts as a potential open circuit here. Not a short, open circuit, right? People on YouTube are quick to correct me, right? But us HVAC guys, we call them shorts, okay? And I'm not talking about the YouTube shorts. <laughs> all right, let's turn this back on and see what happens. It works. All right, now, Peter, I would like you to go to the, let's go to the thermostat on the first floor. Let's turn off the heat. All right, we'll wait for it to turn off, and then we're gonna wait a few minutes to turn it back on. We're gonna make sure we eliminated our potential open circuit. And ladies and gentlemen, if you happen to enjoy watching my content, and you're in the HVAC industry, and you happen to be living in South Carolina, and you are in the Charleston area, and you would like to work for me, hit me up, Mike at MikeyPipes.com. I'm estimating in between, uh, right now it's the last day of September, September 30th. I'm estimating that we're gonna be up and running probably around January, February, 2023. Um, I still have a lot of work to do, and again, I don't know the condition of the Charleston area right now because of Hurricane Ian, um, but it disrupted my plans. I was supposed to be there, my boots on the ground yesterday, today, tomorrow, and Sunday, looking for a uh, flex space. But we're gonna see what happens. But if you're interested, Mike and MikeyPipes.com, email me. Let's have a conversation. And remember, I don't cut any corners, so don't be sneaky. All right. So Peter turned off the thermostat. Right now, we're gonna wait for that Aquastat relay to drop in temperature. Aquastat really strap on Aquastat. It's over here. We're gonna wait for that to drop in temperature because right now it's set for 140 degrees. Uh, it's gonna take a little longer because the cover is off, right? So let's get that cover back on, just, just to shove it back into place, and uh, let's wait for this uh, system to turn off. All right, I just have the cover just in place, and the reason why I want to put the cover on because right now that blower, it's right there. It's sucking in all the air from this open area from the from the uh, knee wall and this. Uh, roof line right here and it's not going to suck the air across the, the hydro coil it's on the other side of the evaporator so if I have the cover in place we're gonna get a lot more air being brought in from the return uh, across the hydro coil across the evaporator and that coil will cool off and then the aquastat will uh, disengage the blower motor all right our fan just turned off what is that aquastat set to now uh, still at 140. Oh, okay, good. All right. 
Now, I would like you to go back to the thermostat and let's turn that back on. But first, I want to secure the door. All right, we're going to turn the thermostat back on. I got the door back to cover. The access panel secured and hopefully it turns back on. Perfect. There she is. She works. Beautiful. <laughs> was it terrible? Uh, no, so there was an electrical, I guess you want to call it short okay. or open circuit somewhere located in the air handler. Got it. Um, the way they wired the system, really you have to be like an electrical engineer to figure out how they did it. Yes, um, I think it was, yeah. He must have really been, you know, expelled from MIT and then Caltech threw him out. Yes. So he decided to do air conditioning with, 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 a, with a major in electrical short, uh, electrical low voltage wiring. <laughs> kind of, yeah. He was because he ran all this. He did the boiler dye. He did all that retrofitting. Everything is one guy. So let me tell you what I did, yeah. what what I saw, what I did, and what I attempted to do to solve the problem. Uh, so you have this fan coil which feeds, which the boiler feeds hot water to. There's a sensor called an aquastat on the, on this fan coil. It's like a, like a thermostat. Right. When it senses hot enough water, it tells the fan to turn on. Right. Very simple. Right. There's no there's no interaction between the thermostat downstairs, which right. controls the heat, and the unit in the attic. There's no interaction. Okay. The only way it's indirectly connected is the piping. Right. Okay. All right? So when I, took the, when, I, when I first took the cover off inside the closet, after removing that panel, yeah. um, I just I tra I traced out which wire was coming from that, that Aquastat. Right. And as soon as I just pulled it, tugged it a little bit, yeah. oop, it kicked the fan on. Okay. I'm like, all right, we have, we have a short or so a, a open circuit. Right on this wiring yeah. so there is probably a half a dozen wire nuts inside all these low voltage wiring right right so i cut them all out i redid them all okay with not wire nuts we, we there are these uh european uh, connectors called wagos and they're far superior got it and it's actually code in in europe we haven't been we haven't gotten there yet <laughs> well, we're getting so i cut them all out and i replaced them okay cool. moving forward if this reoccurs again yeah. uh which i doubt right. but you're gonna have some kind of electrical issue and I'm not saying call an electrician, but we're gonna have to spend a lot more time here because right. if it's happening, if it's hap if it happens again, then it's gonna keep it recurring. Right. Because then, then obviously there maybe there's a break in the wire or something right. like that. And, and now we're talking about from now, there to there to there. Now we're talking about reinventing the wheel. Right. And at which point maybe we, we would consider maybe abandoning what you have. Not abandoning, but maybe maybe it's time to replace at that point. Right. So, okay, and, this is, yeah. and with the technology that's out there now, mm. um, the boiler would come on only as an emergency. That's right. what kind of systems that are available now that's ultra, ultra efficient. Right. You know, like, I know you have a Freon-based system. Right, it's one of those heat one pump of those, things, right? Yeah, heat yeah. pump. And yeah. the, the heat pumps now, yeah. it's like, it's like literally, remember back when, when they changed the LED light bulbs, you know, about a decade ago? Yeah. They said, oh, this is the best thing since like because they use that much, like, that much less electricity. Yeah. The same exact principle. Right. So the technology is out, yes, it, it's more expensive than a traditional air conditioning system, but Something to consider, like let's say the compressor dies, or you have a, refrigerator, a Freon leak, and you really got to spend some big bucks. That's the time to bite the bullet and revamp the system. Right, and at that point, you run, you basically replace the boiler with a heat pump, a big enough one that can yes. run. Yes, and and, and 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 I'm not saying do this, right. but there are rebates now that are available because of our great president. Yes, <laughs> right. There are, there are rebates now available that if you got rid of the gas in your house, yeah. you it would it would be enough rebates where it almost pays for the entire job. Yeah, okay. You'd have to lie about your income a little bit, though. <laughs> sure yeah, All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in to today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it somewhat educational. And I hope I made you laugh a little bit. Because at the end of the day, if you're stuck at that job, being just over broke, or maybe you're not, maybe you're tired and miserable, and then you go home to your miserable wife or miserable husband, right? and you just hate life, find a better career. Find a better career. Or maybe you're in a good career, like HVAC and plumbing, and you work for a miserable, really miserable, see you next Tuesday type of person. Right? See you next Tuesday. You know what that stands for? See you next Tuesday? You'll figure it out. Then maybe you need to work for me. And this maybe you happen to be in South Carolina, and maybe you happen to be near Charleston. But... Make the move. Make the move, ladies and gentlemen. Make the move, because I'm making moves. All right. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hope you enjoy the weekend. 
or the rest of the day or the evening, regardless of what time of day or night you're watching this. Until next time, be well, God bless, stay safe. Don't forget to smash that thumbs up button. Smash.